So I know we talked about uh, different pacemakers in the body, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to kind of revisit that and show you an interesting example. So let's start out by kind of laying out the uh, table we'd kind of set up before. We talked about the heart rate in beats per minute, and we talked about the heartbeat itself, you know, the length of the heartbeat, and we had measured the heartbeat in terms of seconds. And you remember there was a, a nice little relationship between the two of these because if the heartbeat actually gets shorter, then you can have uh, more heartbeats in a minute. And so, of course, then the heart rate goes up. So that's a relationship that, uh, that explains how it is that our heart rate goes up and down. And we talked about the SA node, the AV node, and the uh, bundle of Hiss. And we said, starting with the SA node, the heart rate was somewhere between 60 and 90. And I, I think I had chosen 90 just because that was kind of a nice, easy number to do math with. And we had said that the heartbeat is about 0.66 seconds. So that's the length of a heartbeat there. And then we have um, the AV node. I'm just going to quickly go through this. I know this is kind of recap for, for you if you've seen the other video. If you haven't, then these numbers come from basically dividing uh, beats per minute uh, down into seconds. And so then each beat then would be one second for the AV node. And finally, we did the bundle of Hiss. And I think I've started trying to take a shortcut in writing bundle of Hiss into just BOH. And that looks something like this. So this is basically, and those underlying numbers are the numbers I'm using to, to calculate the heartbeat lengths. So that's basically what we'd come up with. And uh, we had also talked about the idea of having kind of uh, delays, right? You, you actually need time for the pulse to take to be in transit, basically. Uh, and so I'm actually going to add a, f a third column to our, to our little table here. And there really is no delay here because the SA node is, is where things are starting. So let me actually just keep my colors the same. And then the AV node, we know that there's kind of a small delay because things do move pretty quick. So we said that, you know, here it'd be something like 0.04 seconds. So you can see that uh, it's actually pretty quick uh, getting from the SA node to the AV node. But then it gets even faster as you get down to the bundle of Hiss. It actually uh, takes only about 0.005 seconds. So it gets really, really fast. And remember that this transit speed, this is really kind of uh, related to conduction velocity. So how fast is the signal getting conducted? So we call this conduction velocity. And the relationship between conduction velocity and the action potential is the slope of phase zero. Remember, the more steep phase zero is, the faster something is going to go from cell to cell to cell. And actually, that brings up a good point because, you know, in the AV node, there's a huge delay built in because the conduction is so darn slow. And so you have to actually remember that there's this 0.1 second delay. And generally speaking, I kind of think of 0.1 seconds is almost nothing. But when you compare it to 0 0.005 seconds, because that's the transit time, it's how long it takes the signal to get down, we said, from the AV node down to our particular bundle of his cell, then all of a sudden this delay is looking enormous, right? By comparison, this looks like a really big, big number. And let me just write transit here as well. So this is time for movement, and then the delay is simply getting through the AV node itself. So this is all kind of just rehashing what we've talked about before. And finally, just to get at least a drawing down, because I like to draw, we have our SA node here, and we have our AV node here, and we have our bundle of Hiss over here. And let me draw it half the distance, somewhere like this. And remember, this is the direction of flow. We're basically trying to move this way and then again this way. So now let me actually jump into something slightly new, right? So let's assume for a second, this is kind of a thought experiment, that instead of 0.04 seconds, I'm just going to kind of focus on these two right now. Instead of 0.04 seconds, let's say that it took 100 times as long. For some reason, let's say that transit time, for some reason, we don't know why, let's say it takes 100 times longer. So this ends up being 4 seconds, right? 0.04 times 100 is 4 seconds. So let's say it takes about 4 seconds, for some reason, to get a signal from the SA node to the AV node. Well, what would that mean for, for us? What would that look like, exactly? And I think you'll start seeing some interesting kind of... Um, 
lessons from this little thought experiment. So if that was the case, if it was actually taking about four seconds to get from one point to another, let's now draw out a timeline. This is a little timeline. And this timeline starts at zero seconds. And then you have, let's say, one second here, two seconds, three, I'm just gonna see how far this goes, four, five, and let's go to six. So this is six seconds, okay? And we're gonna kind of follow what happens over six seconds. So let's imagine now we keep track of our SA node up here, and we're gonna keep track of our AV node down here. So at time zero, let's imagine that everything is kind of beginning, and we watch our SA node. Let's start with that one first. Well, at two-thirds of a second, because that's about how long it takes uh, we calculated, we would get our first action potential, uh, or heartbeat would kind of go through, right? First beat. And that would then try to make its way towards the AV node. So this one is going to try to make its way towards the AV node, but we know it takes four seconds to get there. Now, what happens after that? Well, you'd have another beat kind of let off. First one hasn't actually made it to the AV node, but the second one is already done by that point. And you'd have a third beat that goes through by that point. And so really we're counting these action potentials that are kind of going through the SA node and they're just keep going through, right? They're just gonna keep flowing through here and they're gonna all just continue and basically just, uh, what are we gonna get? A total of probably nine, right? We're gonna get nine signals sent off. All right, now they're all gonna take, each of them is gonna take four seconds to get to the AV node. So when will this first one get to the AV node, this very first one? We'll get to the AV node somewhere around here, right? Somewhere around here. Because that's four and two-thirds of a second. So at four and two-thirds of a second, this one, let me somehow kind of show you without making this too messy, this one will make it to the AV node right here. Of course, at that time, the SA node itself is letting out its seventh action potential, but that very first one will get there uh, at that point. Now, the AV node, is it going to sit around and wait for four and two-thirds of a second to just kind of go by and not do anything? No way, right? There's no way, because what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, well, let's wait for a signal from the SA node. And at this point, it's going to say, well, nothing arrived from the SA node, so I'm going to let off my own signal. And it's going to keep doing this. So it's going to go on its own rhythm now. So two, three. So all this time, the AV node is kind of on its own rhythm, right? And then finally, before AV node is able to fire off its own fifth action potential by itself, a signal arrives from the SA node, this red arrow that I drew in. And so it'll say, oh, wait, we just got some positive ion pass through the electrical conduction system, so let's go with it. So it'll have a signal there. And then now it'll have another one here because what happens at that point? Well, you have this guy arrives, right? He took four seconds and he arrives right there. And then this guy is gonna arrive kind of after that. He's gonna arrive right there. So you see they start arriving. And so once they start arriving, then you kind of get back onto a normal, what looks like a normal rhythm. And so it's interesting because you basically, as a result of this long delay, have a phenomenon where for a while, the AV node is kind of doing its own thing over here. And then after that, it catches up or the SA node catches up and then it continues on what we would look like or what would look like a normal sinus rhythm. And so sometimes you'll hear the term escape beats or escape rhythm. And so that's what these are. These are escape beats, meaning they have escaped they escaped the normal flow of electrical conduction, which starts with the SA node. So hope that was helpful.